Hello, hello. Super excited. Hello, good evening. Hi there, Christine, sweetie. How are Hi. you? I'm seeing everybody I'm popping in here. Good. Great. I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Donna. Hey, Pamela, Francesca, and Stu, and Sherry, and Sarah. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting, you all. So we're going to take a few minutes. Everybody's coming in. I am looking for Lorraine and Kim. I'm looking for Bridget. And I didn't, Bridget was going to help me out with the co hosting here and manage the chat for me in case, well, so I can stay focused. So, oh boy, everybody excited? I am. I'm getting, I'm getting, super excited. I've got some treats for you today. Yeah, a lot of people aren't on video. Okay, that's cool. If you want to come on, I'd love to say hi. Sharon and Janelle and Zora and Nicola and April and Ravina and Tracy and Nova. Hello, and Teresa. Hello. Ivan. Hello, hello. Welcome. <laughs> And Liz, great to see you here. And Ruthie, we'll get give them a few more minutes. Jenny, hi, Jenny. Looks like you're outside. Hey, we're going to do some work today. So I'm just going to invite you to try and find a spot where you can sit down and then really enjoy the work. So I believe in um, getting stuff done, you know. And so, hey, um, is anybody else willing to handle the chat for me? To willing to co... Christine, how do you feel about that? Could you handle that for me? Francesca, you can do that? Okay. Um, I guess I can co-ask you to be co-host, right? How do I do that? Yeah, I'm not sure how that works, but I can do it for you. Once it's set up. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to make you co-host here. There we go. Yeah. And um, yeah, so there will be just a few times where I ask for some input and then maybe you could help me. I don't even know what I'm doing here. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to turn it. I'm, I'm ready to roll. We've given everybody three minutes. Do you think that's fair? Is that fair? Yes. Thumbs up? If that's that's yes. fair, reasonable? Okay, yeah, you guys are ready to rock and roll. I see that. Okay. All right. Um, please excuse the sun is going down here. So here I am in, um, I got the spotlight on me, right? So where are you calling in from? Can you just chat there and tell me where you're calling in? I know I've got some shining lights from down under and south in Australia. So chat, put in the chat where you guys are from. Chicago, yes. Vermont and Denver, Colorado, and Sanitas, yes, my old stomping ground, Ontario, Canada, I'm assuming, and Los Angeles and Texas and Miami, Utah, Indianapolis. Yes, Sarah, you're down under. Great. Napa, St. Croix, wonderful. All right, guys. Well, you know, in this class, because it is a class, some of you are visual learners and you like to maybe make a note. And so I'm going to encourage you to get a pen and paper and take a minute to go get that. Some of you are audio learners, so you just want to hang on every word that I say. And that's cool, but maybe you want to minimize your distractions of anything moving around you or, you know, outside distractions, people coming in and or out of your room. And some of us are just feelers. And so you're going to feel the energy. Regardless, it's kind of helpful to sometimes have a piece, piece of paper and note. Um, just, to, just to write down a note or two. Um, so, yeah, I, I just want to remind you, let's turn off our ringers. And um, so that we can have this time. I like to stay on track and on time so we can get right into it. You know, 
um, it's a really, really great reminder that there, there's so many more people that are wanting to get in touch with their intuition. So we're going to be talking about that over the next three days and ways that you can, you can um, get into your, um, listen, listen and feel and, and know what is, is talking to you. So this is part one of our three part training. Each class is one hour. So we'll do it today, Monday, and then Tuesday and Wednesday. And so it's going to help you be able to connect with your intuition in these difficult times and whatever difficult times might be going on for you. It may be the loss of a loved one. It may be on the job front. It may be health wise, whatever that might be. And what, is, what I've noticed over the years in working with people is there's three major Major mistakes that people make when they're trying to connect with their intuition. And the first one is ignoring or suppressing their emotions. When we suppress our emotions, what that does is it just builds to an energy that we know as overwhelm. And so it's really um, important to acknowledge your feelings, to be able to, you know, even feel the discomfort of it, and then to be able to process them effectively. If we don't manage them, they will bubble over. Back. Yeah, I'm going to invite somebody to mute. I, don't, I can't see what's going on there. Yeah, the, the, and the second thing that I've noticed is that people overthink, and we analyze all of our issues, our concerns that's going on. And all that does is it brings us in a cycle of re, re, remo, rumination and and worry. And, and it just doesn't um, resolve this, the problem. It, it creates this cycle of worry and anxiety and analyzing and worrying and worrying some more. Quite honestly, worry actually destroys whatever it is that you're trying to create. And the third thing, the third mistake that people make in not trusting their intuition is they're not able to take action or they don't get support. So it's like not being able to take action because there's an energetic block or reaching for the support that you need in order to get yourself, one, relaxed, be able to engage with the energy and the momentum of, of your next step, whatever that is. And along with that comes with that, that, that feeling of procrastinating or avoiding something. And that just, again, exasperates the problem. And so when we can take our intuitive power back, that's when we really can you know, uh, chug along. I noticed, you know, Lori, I was celebrating with her earlier this week, you know, with all the excitement of all her job, the flurry of job interviews that she's experiencing. Um, so, you know, a lot of times what happens is when we've got some issues that we're trying to figure out, have you ever played that game pros and cons where you had a piece of paper and on one side of the paper, you have pros and on the other side, you have cons and you just start going down the list and you list all the cons and, you know, conventional wisdom would have us go with the pro section, right? Um, yeah, and sometimes that's not always the best answer. Another way we handle it is we call up all of our friends or a handful of them. I used to do that. Call everybody, tell them the situation, especially when it's a, you know, a life changing um, experience. And then we get irritated or annoyed. Maybe we don't like what the friend has to say. Um, and that just builds up more frustration and, and for us to really not trust our intuition. So yeah, that just, that keeps us stuck even more and anxious. And then if we make the wrong decision based on our friend, then we resent them, right? So make a comment in the, in this, uh, where do, what do we call it? <laughs> the comments, tell me if you've ever found yourself doing that, have you done the pros and cons or have you called 15 friends or have you done nothing and just gone around and around in circles? What has been your um, pattern? So I can see what's going on here. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, great. Yeah. All the above. Yeah. You guys know. Yeah. Overthinking. It's a, it's paralyzing, isn't it? All right. 
And then sometimes we just go numb after a while we've analyzed it to death. And so then we just go carry on worrying. And I know I had the grandmother that taught me well, she was the world's best. I'm sure she had the Guinness world book of records for worrying and every little thing she would worry about. And so it gets to be annoying to be around somebody that is, that's, that's their go-to, right? That's their mode of operandi. Yeah. So that's great. So I know, you know, having done this work for over 25 years now, I've watered down some processes into a very distilled, uh, simple step that is three parts that we're going to learn in the next three days. And um, to help get you back on track, no matter what's going on, you know, from the from the worst case of death and health issues and all of that were the biggest decisions of your life. These tools will facilitate you being able to jumpstart that and redirect yourself, whether you continue working with me or not. So the, the trick is being able to break away from that cycle of anxiety and get the clarity and the confidence that you need to make the best decisions for yourself. And that will create and help you manifest your desire. So does that sound something you'd like? Does that even seem possible to you? Or does it maybe even sound like a fantasy for you? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and give me a yes or a why in that chat so I can see if that you're on the right page on the same page with me. Awesome. I like that. Okay. So the biggest reason I do this is to be able to help you get back on track is really the way to gain confidence and clarity and certainty. And I can't tell you how many people reach out to me. And the number one thing is confidence or clarity. Those two are hand in hand. And so, you know, some of you a lot, a lot of you are my mentoring students and we, we go back a, a lot with each other back and forth, right? But I want to share a little bit about me for all of you people who don't know me. My name is Amira Hall and I have a PhD, a doctorate in theology and a master's in metaphysical science. I've been on this path for over 23 years as a professional. And I'm, maybe you're like me. Have you ever hit rock bottom? <clears throat> Well, that, that place is where you feel there's no way out and you've tried every single thing and no matter what you do, everything still falls apart. Well, I didn't know how to fix that. That happened to me and I was 35. Um, my dad died. Um, I went was going through a divorce at the time and my health deteriorated. I went to my doctor um, and he told me the worst news imaginable. He told me to go home and prepare my affairs, that I would die. I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome. He said I would die or I'd end up in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. Well, that's depressed doesn't even begin to describe how I felt that day. And so when I thought that I couldn't, nothing could get worse, I got fired from my job. And my life felt like a snag thread being pulled through a sweater, slowly unraveling. And so I began a journey of healing and surviving, basically, healing myself. And that was when I started my seven year journey of um, making drastic changes to my health, really getting so aware of what works in terms of health and what doesn't. And I really started to learn to appreciate the small things in life. Because after losing my dad, I went on a quest, like what happens when we die? And I grappled with that. And that's when I found myself looking for a sense of purpose. What was this all about? And facing my own what they called mortality at the time, that's when I started to tune into the ancient mystery schools and meditation. And then there was along that journey, I had this mysterious nudge out of nowhere that I needed to take a spiritual pilgrimage to Egypt. And so I went and had a marvelous time, an incredibly mystical, mysterious and um, awakening uh, trip. And that's where I had a near-death experience outside the Valley of the Kings, the largest tombs or burial ground on the planet. And so right where the pharaohs are built, uh, buried. So let me tell you, coming back 
to the United States, coming back after that experience, reconnecting with my earth body was a daunting task because I felt myself hurling through the cosmos um, towards a familiar blue planet off in the distance. And it was uh, the, the sound of Arabic was like a beacon that was directing me to where I last left my body and coming through back into my body was, was anything but smooth sailing. It felt like I was struggling to put on wet clothes. Every movement was a struggle. And then the, the piercing sunlight was just blinding me. It was actually painful and disorienting. And at the same time, I felt my bowels were ready to explode and I desperately needed a washroom. And I'm grateful, thankful that my dear Egyptian friend was with me that day. He helped keep me uh, in a safe place until my energy was restored. You know, the whole time I was feeling like a brand new baby um, filled with this incredible bliss, love and, and joy. And at the same time, I had this amazing sense of clarity. And it was a, there was a, a surreal, but a dis disturbing realization that I had at the same time, because that's when I started to see things that other people couldn't see, mysterious beings and phenomena that would defy explanation. It actually felt like I stepped into the cantina scene in Star Wars. And it was just a strange world of unfamiliar sights and sounds. And I had no words to explain, but returning to the United States is where that was, I experienced the biggest shock to my system. I was alone. I was lost. I isolated. I was depressed. And once again, my life started falling apart and I lost, I, I was fired from my six figure job. That was in 1998. And that profound day has changed everything for me and put me on this path today and brings us here. Um, what could, what I couldn't shrug off, what I couldn't ignore with that nudge within me of what happens when we die, especially since I didn't know if I died. I didn't see a tunnel. Why didn't Jesus appear to me? And so I went on a journey. I went to dozens of healers. I was trying to find out where I went, what happened to me. And so I knew I was different, but it wasn't until I met an energy healer who told me I had stuck energy. That was the day, a break free for me. I got out of jail, so to speak. Um, I, I wanted my old life back. I was willing to do anything to get out of the misery, the pure hell that I was living in. Because I have to say this is I was, it was like all my chakras opened up and I was just overwhelmed um, with sights and sounds. And it was just a crazy world. So within a few months, I found myself on a massage table. So I embarked on the training. I was in some classes to learn about managing my energy. And I was on this massage table. And that's when I suddenly left my body. I had an out of body experience. And I went into the mystical hall of records. And I was granted an awe inspiring tour of the all. I was able to see the very energy that powers the universe. And I entered into what I call the fabric of all creation, love. And it was it was a blessing for me because I also feel, felt and received a, a vivid life review. And for me, that was a timeline. And that showed me where all my emotions had created dis-ease. I got, the emotions got stuck. They created dysfunction in my life and, and the destruction of my dreams, of my goals. So that stuck with me. And that life altering experience um, showed me that our journey here on earth is about learning about who we are to manage that very essence of who we are, which is energy, in order to create our desires. And so much of that journey is all about releasing energy blocks. It's about, I believe, creating miracles. And so that newfound awareness and my psychic superpowers has enabled me um, to do this extraordinary work and, and live an extraordinary life and brought me overseas living in Dubai and, and meeting amazing people from all of you from all over the country and all over the world and to guide you on your journey. So I can swear you do not have to have a near death experience and I don't advocate that. So today I'm just grateful 
you know, for hitting rock bottom because a couple of times, because it's led me on the spiritual journey. It's led me to transform my life in ways that I would have never imagined or ever thought possible. So that's where it got me. And so the biggest challenge that I had, that I see that everybody has, that I encounter is getting grounded. And grounding is our reality here in now, in the moment. It's about being in alignment, being aware that you're here in this moment, having this human experience. So newsflash, you are intuitive. <laughs> you have this unique ability as a spirit to perceive the energetic frequencies around you. And that's part of your spirit communicating with your physical body. That's what intuition is. And so my journey has been to guide people using some tools that I created. Uh, obviously, I needed to learn first because I was in such a meltdown state that I had to remember all the parts of me and and recreate myself. Um, so, so the journey is, and the first step is learning how to be grounded. What does that mean? Once I learned how to get grounded, it gave me a way to release the anxiety, to release the stress or my perceptions of what I thought my reality was. And after I learned to ground, it was almost like, like the snap of a fingers, just easily and effortlessly um, you know, things started to return to normal. I thought I would get another six figure job back, but the funniest thing happened. I would apply for jobs and three times, let's say I would, when you get to the third interview, typically you, you, your, 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 your shoe in, right? I did that three times and three times when I get to the third interview, I was not selected. Well, let me just tell you, I was pissed off at God and the universe and, had, you know, lots of things to say about that. But it wasn't until I got really, really angry about it, that I realized, oh, my gosh, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to be going back into that career, you know, um, or on that path in corporate. So I want you to write on a piece of paper. I am intuitive. <laughs> I am intuitive. Yes, you are. <laughs> Yeah, that's your first homework. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing about um, releasing anxiety is key. And it's paralyzing to us when we keep second guessing ourselves. And that, you know, to use the energetic term, it doesn't allow then ask the very nature of who we are to flow. So the number one tool that we're going to start with is that grounding tool. And grounding is our reality. Um, when we can ground correctly, efficiently, it helps us to step away from chaos. It helps us to release the confusion and helps us to gain a greater sense of clarity. All of a sudden, everything gets settled down. And, you know, our physical body, it likes routine. The difference between our spirit and the body, the spirit, the energy part of ourself, well, it loves excitement. It loves imagination. It loves um, changes. It loves new things and adventures. Whereas the physical body, well, the physical body likes comfort. We like routine. Have you ever tried to, you know, guarantee you were going to start exercising tomorrow, right? Well, let's let's go back to something else. Like when we're hungry, the body communicates to us, right? You get gurgles, or all of a sudden you start feeling this pain, like, man, I'm I think I'm hungry. I think that's what my stomach's trying to tell me. You know, when we're tired, you you start to yawn. Well, and I yawn when I'm doing my readings, but that's clear. That's something else. It's a grounding. It's part of the grounding. When you're tired, what do you start yawning? And you might curl up on the couch, right? The body's telling you that it's time to lay down. When we're cold, what do we do? 
we get shivers, we get cold, and that tells us we're going to wrap ourselves in a blanket and feel safe. When the body's hurting, when we've got pain in the body, when it's stressed, we want to rest, we want to be still, we don't want to stretch it to, to what we did the day before. So when the body is holding on to anxiety or panic or fear, um, that's an, an, and depression, it slows it down. It doesn't want to move. It doesn't want to shift. And so what happens is when that energy gets stuck, it literally creates the dysfunction. And so, you know, eventually organs and our systems start breaking down. Now, I know that some of you, many of you are empaths, and you get easily overwhelmed with other people's energies. And those energies can get stuck in in your energy field, unbeknownst to you, because you don't have any tools, or the awareness, you just tend to, let's say, withdraw or hibernate or, you know, hide from the world like I did. Um, And so what we're doing here today is we're going to level up that when, when you have tools to now go participate in the world, then it can be a whole new game, it can be a whole new world and a a wonderful adventure. You know, sometimes intuition is a real funny thing. Um, It likes to play. Yeah, that's our spirit, the intuition. So we're going to um, give our, we're going to work with our spirit today. And with our body and get them to what I say, come together a little closer in communication. And so that practical tool that I teach um, helps you feel good, you know, and because you deserve to be happy. You deserve to feel alive. You deserve to be able to fully express your creativity, yeah, and your personality. And um, without feeling dumb that you said something wrong or, you know, that was stupid. Why did I say that? Or that somebody's going to criticize you. You deserve to have that space, that freedom to just be you, right? So it's really fun to um, to learn these things. And as you start working with them, and I've worked with thousands of people over the two and a half decades of doing this, no matter what it is that people are struggling with, they they begin to feel more calm. And a common word that I hear from everybody, and all of you that are working with me, um, chat, write in the chat, lighter. <laughs> if you felt lighter working with the tools or working with the systems that I do, you can put that in the chat. Yeah. Come on. Are you guys gone to sleep on me? <laughs> Definitely lighter, lighter. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) I know, but anyway, it's just hilarious for me because I'm on the receiving side when I'm working with clients. And then all of a sudden, so what are you noticing? Oh, gee, I feel lighter. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So that's awesome. So yes, the other thing that you might want to write down is that you have a soul. I know that sounds trite, but you are a spirit. You are an energy you are having a human experience. And that curious spirit is always on the go. It's always pulling and yanking you around. And it has a hard time staying with your body that you contracted, that that you agreed to come to this earth to have this human experience. And if the body is resistant, or if it's got some stagnant energy, or if it's not letting go of the anxiety or the overwhelm and everything, the worry, guess what? The spirit won't come in to the body. And that's when you you struggle being able to manifest whatever it is you want, whether it's a new work or a new relationship or a better health. So that's what we're doing is we want to clear the energy so that spirit of you can come closer into the body. And instead of just being, you know, fumbling along and just, you know, trying to figure out life, that's what we all do. I mean, none of us came in with a with a manual. Certainly my parents didn't have a manual. And um, so just the awareness, having my having had the near-death experience and and having that tremendous struggle was the only way. I, I I'm I'm difficult. Okay. I'm stubborn. So I was spirit realized that they needed to give me the cosmic two by four approach before I'd really get it and figure it out. So 
So when the spirit can come closer to the body, that's spirit's communication to us is what I call our intuition. And that's where we, we, um, it will give us messages. We sometimes feel it, right? You empaths, we can um, hear it. That's the clear audience, this clear seeing, the clairvoyance, the clear cognizance, the clear knowing. And I'm sure that every single one of you have had one or both or all of those experiences from time to time. And it helps us when we can have that clear signal, make the best decisions for ourselves, right? We can set better boundaries. We can say no to something that we would have in the past said, oh yes, okay. And then you're pissed off that you're doing it, right? So we are way, we're learning ways here so our spirit can come closer so that we can more effortlessly make a clear, quick decision without going into the old pattern of worrying and to being depressed or feeling fearful that things aren't going to work. So as I said, the body loves comfort, the body loves routine, but the spirit's always mixing it up. And, you know, in my practice work, I can tell you and see your spirit leaving the body when we're practicing the tools, because the spirit, if you think of Hawaii right now, boom, we just all high, high tail to Hawaii. Yeah. Or I could say Australia and we'd be down there with Sarah in her living room. <laughs> right, Sarah? So your spirit um, says, is basically saying, hey, let's get off the couch. It's go time. Let's go have some fun. We want to listen. We want to, you know, play. And uh, so th the challenge becomes, how do we listen and hear our spirit? Some of us are hit and miss, right? Some of us, it's not consistent. And that's the goal. That's having the treasure is when we can have that consistent connection. You know, back in 90, 1997, a year before I went to Egypt, I was working with a shaman in, in the jungle. And my spirit came to me. And that's when it showed me that I needed to go to Egypt. And it was like, oh, wow. Oh, that was so, such an aha moment. And I didn't second guess it. I just absolutely knew with every part of me that I was going to Egypt. Didn't know how, didn't have the money, didn't know anybody that would, you know, sell me a ticket or anything like that. So, so that's, that's how it can work so strong. So let's see. My near-death experience definitely got my attention. Um, our spirit really just is here to help us express the beauty of our soul. And, um, and, and, and it does that through playful imagination. Yeah. So we're going to mix it up. We're going to learn how to play with our spirit. And we're going to learn how to trust our intuition, right? So if you're a person just check in with yourself. Are you somebody that leans toward, towards depression? If you do, your energy is stuck in the past. And so you can write in the chat, me, is that you? Where you lean towards um, depression? That's some of your Edna, yeah, sadness. Yes. Yes, Sarah, Francesca. Great. So the, um, the, the flip side of that is if you're feeling that you're, you're full of anxiety or you struggle with anxiety or confusion. Is that you? Go ahead and write me if you find yourself getting anxious. If something, some new event is coming up or uh, a new, something that you've never embarked on or, uh, you know, meeting someone new or, yeah, just not sure what's going to hold. Well, that's a sign that your energy is in the future. And so there again, it's when it's in the future, it's not present. And if you find yourself going both anxious and you're depressed, your energy split. It's some of it's in the past, some of it's in the future. The whole goal is to be in the present. That is where your power is. I often say this to my students. If you're here to manifest, which I believe you are, you might not know you are yet, but we're here to manifest. And the power happens when the spirit and the body come together. And that's where the, the true magic happens, right? So are you ready to dive in? You can write me. Yeah, let's go. Thumbs up. 
let's go anxious of the past but since the death of your dad your daughter mom and your son not anxious okay well you've gone through that process sherry haven't you of letting some of that go i'm sure at the time it wasn't all that you know easy street that's that's a big um you know amount of of loss and in a short amount of time i know they didn't have they happened relatively close so and that's the other thing you know I've said a lot about this on my lives. I'm meeting more and more people that are having loved ones that are leaving much younger and there's so many more. And I believe this is continuing. And I know there's a lot of souls that are ready to leave this crazy world. So, hey, um, I'm not here to hold them back. I've been to the other side. It's an amazing place. Talking to your loved ones and and Sherry, I, I, I so appreciate being able to communicate with your son. And there's a few others of you on here. I think you're your 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 children are here. Your children are here. They want to say hi. All right. So we're going to get going here into the actual meditation tonight. So if you're able to put yourself in a chair and, and get yourself comfortable with the feet fat flat on fat flat on the floor, <laughs> be amused with the foibles. Yeah, our intention is to have a thought. You know, when we write the write down the word intention, intention, and intention, you, we can write down simple ones. Like, I intend as soon as I read the last chapter of this book, I'm going to get up and go do the dishes. And we get up and go do the dishes. I intend tomorrow to dress up, to go to work. I'm going to, you know spruce up a little bit in a different way. Maybe I'm going to draw, I intend tomorrow to drive a different way to work. And we drive a different way to work and we have a different experience. Your intention is to, let's say, wake up, up wake up tomorrow uplifted and happy for no reason. Just that's your intention. It could be that easy. Or dress a little nicer or dress a little more formal or uh, whatever it is that you want to mix up your day, setting intention is a powerful first step. And so maybe you want to communicate with your toddler child in a different way, more, more sensitive and more calm. So whatever that intention is, it's an anchor point in the present time. It brings our spirit into the moment and the now, you know, so it kind of helps us be present. And just because we intend right now to ground ourselves. So we are going to ground ourselves in this meditation practice. So with your eyes closed, take a deep breath in and just tune into your body. Just say hello to this beautiful body of yours. Oh, you might have some complaints. The clothes are fitting a little tighter, whatever. We've got our complaints, right? But we just want to just say hello to the body and really give thanks to our body for getting us here and doing everything you did today. And just acknowledge if there is some tightness or if maybe there's some pain in the body, just notice it. Just say hello to it. You know, we're conditioned with understanding the tree has roots. And, and that root system is the way the tree grounds itself to the earth. And, you know, a mountain is also connected to the earth and it can be very grounded. We don't see what's below the ground, right? We just know and see what's on top. So grounding in our reality you're, as I said, your spirit loves to play, laugh and have fun and be created, creative. The, the spirit is kind of faking it till it makes it. It's kind of a goofy part of who we are that's just ready to, you know, just launch off a cliff and, and, and has no, no hold back. So um, we're going to start by playing with our spirit and create an image for our body to ground itself. And we're going to imagine you can imagine tree roots if you want from the base of your spine 
your lower back area. And we can just imagine whatever picture comes to your mind because your spirit's playful. Maybe it's tree roots. That's easy. It could be maybe a waterfall. And you can just imagine all the way down from the base of your spine, all the way through the chair that you're sitting on, through the earth's crust, and down, down, down. And just imagine that you can see or connect with the center of the earth. It's hundreds of thousands of miles below, but you can just instantly connect with it. And it, your, your grounding cord could be a, a, a string of monkeys. It could be elephant tails, link in, elephant trunks and tails interlinked. It could be a train track or a slippery slide. It could be, uh, I don't know, a stream of dolphins swimming down. When we get to the center of the earth, as you notice yourself there, you can just wrap some of your grounding around the core of the earth. And as you do that, you recognize a magnetic pull or snap. And that magnetic pull is gravity that begins pulling through the grounding cord, like a vacuum that begins pulling all the energy from your spinal column any energy in your physical body that you're ready to release completely without effort, this giant vacuum or suction or the, the force field of gravity, you don't have to do anything about it. Just play, allowing gravity to work for you or acknowledging your role in, in letting gravity show its force. So as we set our intention to just let go and let everything roll away from you, let your activities of the day work or things you've got planned for this week or last week, just let it all flow away. Maybe there's people in your life. Maybe there's some problematic relationships. Maybe there's some adorable relationships. Let all of that roll away. Just noticing if there's still some pain in the body, just imagine that grounding cord attached to that point in pain and just intend for that pain to release down the grounding cord. I call it a cord because oftentimes I visualize it as a USB um, cord. You could have a laser beam. Maybe you guys would like to share in the chat what you see for your grounding cord. Oh, Janine is Jenny's driving. <laughs> Don't well, you can do it driving, but not the meditation part, okay? And, and in my mentoring program, we talk about um, how you can use the tools throughout the day. So we don't want to lose control of the car, right? Yes, Lorraine, I, I appreciate your loss too, saying hello to mom and dad. So just letting go of that anxious energy down your grounding cord. And Marie Pierre says, you know, letting creative energy flow. Um, invade your space. Well, let's, let's flip that around a wee bit. Let this, whatever's invading you release so that the creative energy can flow. How does that sound? Yeah. A golden rope. That's lovely, Jenny. Oh, you're diving. Is it diving? Maybe not driving. Okay. All right. Any other comments on what your grounding cord is? It's always fun to see what people, and you know, today it Today, it could be one thing and tomorrow it could be something else. Now, just imagine setting today's date in that grounding court. It's uh, May 1st, 2023. And for you down under, Miss Sarah, it's 20, uh, May 2nd. <laughs> yeah, she's ahead of all of us. 
A lot of energy flowing, Pamela says. Great. Oh, you're diving into this. Okay, Jenny, that's awesome. Yeah, so without effort, notice how that gravity feels and pulls on all of that energy. Maybe you could just scan for a minute, scan, scan your body and just like an MRI machine, scan the body to see if there's any blocks. And you can just magically attach a grounding cord to that block. As I said, our body loves routine. So just telling your body that it's, it's okay to let go of this pain, any anxiety that you're storing, anything that you're hanging on that's making you nervous, confused. Because our spirit gets really excited when we start letting that go. And you start waking up inspired and like Sarah shared with me a few weeks ago, she said, you know, for the first time I put makeup on in six years. That's just such a relief of releasing energy that's been built up. We'll do little things that we haven't been doing or we forgot or that we love to do in the past, but oh, we just get so bogged down. So we stop doing it, right? Vines, that's wonderful. How would you know what a block would feel like? Well, just ask yourself, your spirit, to scan the body. And maybe you'll feel something. Maybe you'll see something. Maybe you'll hear a word. And maybe not. And that's okay. So just continue allowing your grounding to work for you. And just intend the block is dissolved. It's that easy. You know, I was speaking with one of my clients in Dubai the other day, and she was on a plane trip uh, for work. And she said she was running her energy and doing the practice tools that I teach. And she said, Amira, I got this message that said, it's just pain. Just, it's just pain. And it was like an instant snap, like, oh, yeah, it is. It's just pain. So why am I holding on to it? <laughs> so that was a great aha for her. So just tell your body, you know, as it loves the routine and it loves its comfort zone, that you've got it. It's safe. It's grounded. And this is what the body's looking for, to feel safe, that it can release the energy. It's calming. Your inner voice is connected with your spirit and your spirit's communicating to you. It's communicating your higher wise self, your higher self. So just say hello to your higher self. Let it say hello to you. And what do you hear? you hear a message? Does it say hello? Sometimes people say they hear angel bells or song. Oh, and Francesca says, you're on the right path. Awesome. Jenny, is that your angel saying that? Your spirit is saying exhaustion and overwhelm? Okay. Your body. Okay. So yeah, your body's in asking for this, your body's inviting this relief, you know, the body can only hold on to so much. And you'll be like me, you'll be diagnosed with, you know, death or wheelchair, which I'm so glad I'm, I was madder than hell at that doctor. But can you imagine? That was over 30 years ago. Look at me today. Do I look like death or wheelchair to you? <laughs> yeah, okay. So your, your, your higher self is here to work with your body. Your higher self is here to support you. 
And I've got thousands of students over the last 25 years that, you know, they forgot how to imagine. Like we were kids I often say, let's pretend we're in kindergarten for a minute, you know, and ask our higher wise self, our higher self to be childlike and playful. And so as you imagine this grounding cord in a playful state, what's happening to the grounding cord? Does it change? Acknowledge that you're here in the present. You're so fully on in the moment. I'm watching you guys in your energies and it's so incredibly beautiful. It's almost like the group energies just went into a nice, solid flow. Awesome. Awesome. You guys are looking great. Well, Pam, you're just jumping ahead. You said it's gone golden. Well, you know, that's part of our next step <laughs> or one of the next steps. But before we go into that, what we're going to do is we're going to say hello to the beautiful Mother Earth energy. And we're going to say hello to these little chakras at the bottom of our feet. And as you open those chakras, kind of like a camera lens, and just allow them to open to maybe 10 to 12%. And we're going to say hello to that earth energy, some neutral calming earth energy. And we're going to allow that earth energy to be in, begin flowing up the bottoms of the feet, in through the ankles, through the calves, up through your knees, in through the thighs, into your first chakra, the wheel of spinning energy at the base of your spine. And then it goes down that beautiful grounding cord. And just welcoming this flowing, powerful, healing earth energy. It's re-nourishing the physical body. We are from the earth. Our body is earth. And it wants to connect that with which we are. So as you intend your grounding to continue releasing, you're intending on this earth energy to flow up through the legs, in through your first chakra at the base of your spine, and down the grounding. And it's flowing. It's a continual flow. And now above your head, imagine a beautiful, golden, cosmic, streaming light that begins to come down into the top of the head. And it comes streaming down, filling your head, moving down the neck, into the torso, coming all the way down the legs and the arms, flowing steady stream of golden light of cosmic energy. It's a column of cosmic energy, completely igniting all the cells of your body and blending with that earth energy. And again, reminding yourself today is May 1st, 2023, here in the moment. And Sarah, I recognize it's tomorrow for you. And so as you ask yourself a few questions, tuning into your sensitivity, what are you sensing right now? I love the sparkle of golden rope, Jenny. Awesome. Doesn't have to be green. It could be, I don't know, garnet. It could be diamond energy. It could be uh, azure sea water. I don't know. It, it could be a different current um, frequency. Yeah, Pamela, so much earth energy is running. And that be you're intending it, you're receiving it, you're allowing it. And so tapping into your intuitive self, what are you noticing in this body? What are the sensations that you're noticing?
Are you feeling the flow? Wow, Pam. Not running energy for 15 years is a, I don't know, silent and deadly. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to feel the flow to make it work, okay? So if you're not feeling it, don't be hard on yourself. It, if it doesn't, you might feel it today, you might, you won't. Um, in working with my students, oftentimes, you know, they'll practice with the tools. And then once we do some energy clearing, and I guide them a few ways and adjustments, they start feeling it. So some days I don't feel it too. So your head is tingling, Sarah, wonderful. It, you said it's tingling hard. I hope it's not painful. Sometimes people see colors as they're bringing these energies in. Sometimes your other intuitive abilities will start to open up. This is just a way to check in with what you're noticing. Okay. Maybe you're seeing symbols or sacred geometry. Your feet are feeling big. Awesome. Yeah, they're thirsty for that earth energy. Yeah, sometimes I feel like I've shrunk into my chair, like I become a mini me. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm floating and growing and as big as a, you know, the moon. Your body is here to and looking for ways that it can support you, even though you don't always know it. Even though you don't always understand it. And your higher self is giving you the wisdom. And we don't often hear it because we don't slow down enough. We don't listen. But it's always there. You're, you're always and everyone is intuitive. Everywhere, all the time. So set your intention. What kind of day do you want? Some of us are still... Continuing with the day, Sarah, you have a fresher start than we do. But if it's not today, set your intention for tomorrow. Well, today and tomorrow. Do you want to be uplifted? Would you like to have the intention for being inspired? <clears throat> Curious? Creative? Happy? Like skipping down a path? So when you feel ready, go ahead and open your eyes. You might want to stretch, move your body. <clears throat> if you had one word to describe how you feel, put it in the comments. Enlivened, relaxed, relaxed, free, different. Yeah, that's awesome. Different's good. <laughs> Cleaner. You yawned. Yay. If anybody's seen me doing readings, I'm yawning all the time. Relaxed and calm, electric. Awesome. Sleepy. Yeah. You know, it's not uncommon um, when people are practicing with my tools or, or, or doing the meditations that they fall asleep. They're so tired. They nod off. And what's happening, Lorraine, is you're literally hitting some unconscious energy. Present, peaceful. That's awesome. You just power washed your insides. Make sure all the blocks were washed away. Awesome, Marie Pierre. Delighted. You guys are amazing. Yeah. So what, um, yeah, so grounding helps us connect with our intuition. Okay, it's that simple. And so I've got some homework for you. I noticed a number of you joined my private Facebook group, Tapping Into Your Inner Knowing. And I'd love to hear, um, I'm going to give you some homework, but I'm going to ask you to post your homework in um on the YouTube channel. I'm going to post this. This this video will be live and I'll send that out to you or available for you to watch. 
Um, and if you could post your homework there. So tomorrow we're going to talk about who's driving your car. And I will tell you, it consistently blows people's minds, that tool. Um, but we're going to first ground and we'll go through this process and then we'll, we'll see who's driving your car. And the day three, we're going to learn a quick chakra shift, chakra shift. That's a good one. Tongue twister. Um, a technique where you can quickly shift from chaos to clarity, um, from anxiety and anxious to being calm. Okay. And it's super quick. It's super fun. And so here's what your homework is. You've got a pen and paper. You don't really need it. It's not too academic. Okay, Nova, you can keep doing this after, after the call. It'll take us some time to get this posted on YouTube, but you can remember then just keep doing it. So your homework, it's going to be fun. Okay. It's very experiential. So what I want you to do between now and our next class is ground yourself in three different places. If you're homebound, you're going to maybe ground in your kitchen, ground in your bedroom, or ground out in your front yard. Maybe um, if you're grounding at work or grounding at getting groceries or grounding driving, I want you to play with the practice of grounding yourself in different places and noticing what you notice. Then come back and on the YouTube channel, on the link, I want you to post what you experienced when you grounded in those places, okay? So it's kind of a, you know, kid's game here, um, but it's, you know, Simon says. <laughs> so yeah, so three sample places where you've grounded yourself and come back and just write that. And so before I forget, we're going to have a, 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 a prize. I'm going to have a drawing for each day where you've left your, your comments on YouTube on this link and check your email. I'll send it to you. I'll also put the link in the Facebook group to make it easier for you. Or you can just go to my YouTube channel because it'll be up there. Okay. I'll keep it um, posted public until I don't know the next night and it'll be private, but I'll be drawing the names the people that leave their homework on the YouTube, I'm going to pick a name each day and I'll be awarding a 30-minute um, um, clearing, 30-minute reading. Okay, so you have a chance to win a 30-minute clearing or session with me. I like to call it whatever. Um, yeah. So any questions, any comments before we go? What's this for? Oh, what's the Facebook? I think in the email, there was an in a Facebook group. It's just a private group to share your experiences or what you're noticing. Um, for my mentoring students, um, I've been I, I've been working on it. I've got my new website sort of in the background uh, to have our own community where we can post with without faith. Anybody that knew me before, I had probably 15,000 followers on Facebook and that all evaporated in uh, December. My Instagram, my Facebook and my pages, it all went away. So I'm really kind of not so warm and fuzzy with Facebook right now, warm and fuzzy with Facebook. You know what I mean? Um, so I've sort of reluctantly opened that up. Um, but anyway, that's a place where we can share and, you know, have community because I've in talking with so many of you, you're having the same experiences and you can learn from each other. So that's what I wanted to do and to get to know each other also to have a safe space to do that. So yeah. <laughs> so I know there's people that don't want to go into the Facebook, Facebook group just because of some of the things, but uh, well, great, Sherry. I'm glad you're looking for it tomorrow too. And so you guys have fun with your homework. I never say this is the hardest part for me is to say goodbye till tomorrow. But uh, I'm looking forward to coming back tomorrow and, and teaching you that fun tool. And so um, just intend to have a, have a great night and, and a great sleep or a great day and uh, bring back your stories. I'll look forward to seeing you. All right. All the best, everybody. Take care. Be amazing. Stay bright. I'll just open this up so I can see everybody here and say goodbye to everybody. Bye, 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 bye. Your mutes, you're all muted. Have a great night. Sweet dreams. You'll be surprised. <laughs>